So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use RevMan and how to enter data into RevMan. Here is one of the support pages for RevMan. You can see the address is cochrane.org. And there's a large amount of material here if you need it to help you with RevMan. I'm going to just walk you through a really simple approach. I'm going to open RevMan. And then I'm going to open a review that I've already sort of prepared. It's this example. As mentioned, there's a lot of material in here that we don't need. Let's pretend that we're just starting to enter data, although I have already entered some data. If you're just using RevMan for a meta-analysis, the first thing you need to do is go into this site menu and click on studies. If you click on the arrow here, you'll get the different types of studies that can be included. Included studies, excluded studies. Well, we're just going to enter included studies. So hover your mouse over the included studies and then click on that. Then right click, which will bring up this drop down menu to add a study. You can see I've already added some studies. All you need to do here is enter any identifier you want for the study. It's fairly standard to put the first author in the year, but you don't have to. You can put anything you want. Generally, at this stage, you can ignore this information. This is part of the Cochrane process. I'd like to add another study to this same section. By section, it means included studies. So now I'm going to add another study. I'm just walking through, and I'll add one more study. And that's all I need. I've already got a fair few studies included. I entered those before. Now if I wanted to see those studies, I have them here. If I wanted to add a study, I could also click on this Add Study button. And if I wanted to see those studies, I can click on this arrow and you'll see the studies there. If you click on the arrow from them, you'll see that there's no information yet associated with that study. So you can close those. And that's that section. The next section we want to go into is the data analysis. So you can put your mouse over the data analysis and click on it and it'll highlight that section and bring us to this part of RevMan. I'm now going to click on this side arrow to open up this section. And what you'll see is in the data analysis I have one comparison. It's of Salmonella vaccine versus a placebo. Then I'm going to click on the this arrow again and let's have a look at what's underneath that. What's underneath that is an outcome for that comparison. So I'm going to compare the proportion of pigs positive in the Salmonella vaccines versus the placebo. And then if I click under that, you'll see that I have compared it in two subgroups. I've got a group of studies that were done in sows and piglets, and a group uh, sows and gilts, and a group of studies that were done in piglets. And finally, if I click under this, I'll see which studies have data. So I can navigate through that component. Now, let's say I want, let's see how I entered that data. Because I want to show you what it looks like. If I double click on this, sorry, sorry, if you double click on the outcome, it brings you to the forest plot. So let's see how I ended up with this forest plot. I'm going to go back to the data analysis section. And in the data analysis section, I see I've highlighted the data and analysis. 
got my mouse over it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a comparison. So this is going to be enter all So that is my comparison. I have data that compares those things. The next question is, what do you want to do? I want to add an outcome for that comparison. What is the characteristics of that outcome? Let's just say it's going to be dichotomous. What is the outcome going to be? What should we call it? Well, it's going to be the proportion of positive pigs. So that's the outcome. That's what's being measured in each group that I'm going to compare. And then I'm going to write in these group names just so they're a little bit clearer. Here we'll have some statistical information that we can talk about later, but let's just do the inverse variance method and we'll do a random effects and we'll do the odds ratio. These can all be changed later so it doesn't really matter. Let's click next. This can all be changed later. We don't know what it is. Just keep moving through it. Now, this tells us how the graph is going to be labeled. So we've relabeled experimental to be the vaccine. So we need to change these and we'll see that they'll make the graph easier to read. And then let's think about the scale. Well, we're on the odds ratio scale. So it's probably going to go from zero to five or zero or uh, one to five or one to zero. Finally, we're going to sort by study ID. Again, this can be changed later, so it doesn't really matter now. I'm going to click next. Then it says, what would you like to do now? Well, I'm going to add a subgroup. So I'm adding a subgroup by clicking on that and I'm going to press continue. What's the name of my subgroup? Well, I'm going to call this one's going to be boars. Let's just say that I have data on boars. So they're a unique subgroup and perhaps I think that I want to know if they're a source of heterogeneity and so I'm going to compare so boars to sows and gilts. Let's say that that's the data I have. Now it says, what would you like to do? Would you like to add study data to the new group? And I would. And so now it brings me to the studies and I have to pick those studies which have that outcome. So they've got to have the enteral soil vaccine, it's going to be boars and they have to have proportion of pig data. So I'm going to pick my studies. Now on my computer I'm using a Mac and the way that I can select just some of these is by pressing the command button. If you're on a PC, it's likely to be different. So I've selected the studies that have the data for this comparison for this subgroup. Then I'm going to click, click Finish. And right at the top here is my subgroup. If I scroll down a bit, you'll see this is where I was. This is the, the other comparison, the Salmonella, the SC54, and now I've got another comparison, which is the Enterol versus placebo. These are two different types of Salmonella vaccines. So now I want to enter data. So the way I enter data is I click on the subgroup where I want to enter the data. So I'm now in this section, and I'm going to click here. I'm going to double click. And when I double click, it opens up. So now I have my subgroup and I have the four studies and all I need to do is populate the fields. Now here's the vaccinated and then the total number of animals are in this column. And then I just need to put the events, which would be the number of animals who tested positive for salmonella in that group.
and I'm just quickly populating those fields with some data that I'm actually making up as I go along. And all I'm doing is using my mouse to move along, but I could also use the side keys. I could use the keyboard keys that go back and forth. And you can see now I have the components of a forest plot that we've discussed in the other videos. Now, let's say that you wanted to add another subgroup. The way you could do that is go over to the side menu. There are many ways you could do this, but the way that I do it is go over to the side menu and go to the outcome and double click on that to get the drop down menu. So you've highlighted the outcome for this comparison and we want to add a subgroup. So it's very hierarchical and you can see it says add a subgroup and I'm going to make that sows and gilts. I'm going to add study data. I've selected the studies. I'm going to click finish. And you'll see again that the study group that I the subgroup I entered is added here, but it has no data in it. So for me, the way that I add data, there are two ways to do it. I could uh, click on the mouse here and say add study data but my preferred way is to click in the gray section and I'm going to double click here you can see that my cursor is in this row and I'm going to double click in this row and that's going to open up the forest plot and there it is and now again I'm just going to into some data.